And will you pray with me, please? Holy God, once more we say thank you for this opportunity to come into this holy place and sing these songs to your holy name. Thank you for the breath of life you have given each one of us again this morning, allowing us to be here in your presence. We seek now your blessing upon us, the blessing of knowing and understanding your will for us. And we ask for this, as in all things, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There shall be a time of anguish such has never occurred before. Not since the beginning of time has such sorrow been known. That's what the archangel Michael told Daniel about what the state of the world and people's lives will be like in the time leading up to the end of our age. People will experience anguish in their personal lives And the whole world will experience what Jesus calls birth pangs, wars, earthquakes, and famines. Not since the beginning of time has such sorrow been known. That's a pretty foreboding statement, not one I imagine we like to hear but is repeated often enough in Scripture that we should spend some time looking at it and trying to understand it, lest otherwise we get turned off by it and then miss the greater meaning. And the greater meaning is this. You shall be delivered and shine like the stars forever and ever. For this is just the beginning. Something new is about to be born. For what you are experiencing are birth pangs. Now let me say right now that um, I myself have never been pregnant and have never given birth. So I cannot tell you from experience what birth pangs actually feel like. I have, however been told by numerous people who have gone through that, and they all tell me the same thing, and believe me, I believe each and every one of them, that they hurt. Giving birth ain't easy, and birth pangs are painful. So while I can't tell you from personal experience about giving birth, I can tell you about pain, physical, mental emotional, and spiritual. And I'm not the only one, of course. Many of us who come to St. Jude and and MCC come from places of pain, where sorrow and anguish were more bountiful than happiness and joy, where our sorrow and anguish felt greater than anything that has ever occurred before. It is impossible for me to speak much further this morning without mentioning what happened in Paris this past Friday night when 129 people were killed in coordinated terrorist attacks throughout that city. Watching the news and hearing accounts of how calm and determined the attackers were, contrasted to the confusion and terror the innocent felt in the midst of a battlefield bloodbath. So I began to think and wonder, is this the end? Are we living in that time leading up to the end of our age? Is the fact that wars are no longer fought on single battlefields but are brought into nightclubs and restaurants and soccer stadiums? Are we now seeing the curtain being pulled back, revealing an apocalyptic world? I mean, mass shootings in the United States, 
If you consider all the killings where four or more people were killed in one incident, there's been 294 of them this year. We're only 300 some odd days into the year. That's almost one a day. And these terrorist attacks in France, you know, this is the second one this year carried out by Islamic jihadists. If you remember, the first was back in January at the attack of the, the magazine Charlie Hebdo where 12 people were murdered. And now this one, where another 129 are dead. And how about the downing of that Russian metro jet last month by a bomb planted by a terror group, killing 124 people in one shot? Or the hundreds of thousands who are fleeing a war in Syria that has lasted for five years now, and has killed anywhere from 125,000 people to half a million people. Or Iraq, Afghanistan, Nigeria, Niger, and Cameroon, where Boko Haram is killing thousands of people and enslaving thousands more. And that's just six examples I just gave of the entire world. Well, how about closer to home? How about those of us who have lost loved ones this year? That sorrow can feel like nothing that has ever occurred before. And the breakup of relationships, that hurts. Watching friends and loved ones endure disease and illness of body and sometimes more frightening, the mind. And how about enduring our own suffering? Pain, illness, depression, loneliness, betrayal, desertion, abandonment. It seems that not since the beginning of time has such sorrow been known. And sorrowful these things are. No doubt about it, no glossing over how much we hurt and want to cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, where are you? Those words first put down on paper by King David when he penned the Psalms and then cried out to God those same sorrowful words by Jesus while dying on the cross and repeated by many, many more over the centuries and millennia. So where does that leave us? I mean, where is the hope? When all we can see is death and terrorism and mean people doing mean things and getting away with it while we try to pick up the pieces and go on every day. Where is the hope? When sorrow and anguish are all around us. Well, the hope, my friends, comes from the lips of that same archangel, Michael, who tells Daniel that after these times of sorrow, you will be delivered. And those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and the wise shall, shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like stars forever and ever. For you see, people have been predicting the end of the world since the beginning of the world. And people have been pointing to the rise of evil acts upon humanity as a sure sign that the end is near. <clears throat> but just as many have been pointing to the multitude of joys that can be found even in the midst of sorrow. And just as many more know that true happiness is found in the Lord. And we are not to get too caught up in the events of this world. You know, most of us, I think, probably go through life, you know, sort of cruising along midair, right? Where most of our days are even keel and, and most things are under control. And every now and then we get to rise up and experience great heights and joys that become milestones in our lives. We find that someone who 
becomes our soulmate. We get married. We have children. We celebrate birthdays and holidays and get to express our thankfulness for our friendships and our blessings. Life is good. Even with all the wars and rumors of wars going on around us. And then there are other times when we dip down. And sometimes it is just a dip. And other times it's a fall. A steep decline from which we have no idea how we'll ever get back up. We lose our soulmates. That relationship ends. Our child dies. And we get the news that we might not live to see our next birthday, holiday, or Thanksgiving. Life is bad. And the wars that are are raging all around the world come home to roost in our own houses. And yet somehow, we continue to find solace in each other's embrace and continue to move forward in faith. It might be that whole two steps forward, one step back thing, but that's still a net of one step forward. In the end, this business of trying to explain why things happen one way or another is a fool's folly. For we cannot really know the ways of the world. We can only, at best, try to sound intelligent when we pretend to know what's going on. Charles Dickens said it best in the opening line of his book, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. I guess the point I'm trying to make this morning is that life is neither a full bed of roses or a bed of thorns. Life is the product of what we make of it. You know, events should not shape the totality of our lives. God and what God asks of us should shape the totality of our lives. When the disciples asked Jesus, when will all these things happen that will inaugurate the end of our age, he didn't really answer them directly, as he often did not. Instead, he said, beware that no one comes along and leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I'm him, and they will lead you away. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be so alarmed. These things happen and yet, the, and yet the end is still to come. This is the beginning of birth pangs. And believe it or not, that's the good news this morning. That we are delivered from loneliness, despair, and death and are promised everlasting life. That through our brokenness, we continue to move forward together toward God's promises of wholeness. That through our interactions with one another and our encounter with God, we are transformed. And that the words of Jesus Christ still have the power to shape our lives today so that we may all know, blessed are the humble, for ours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for we shall be comforted Blessed are the gentle, for we shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger for thirst and thirst for righteousness, for we shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for we shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure of heart, 
for we shall see God. So my friends, let us remain steadfast in our faith, resolute in our desire to serve God, and happy to be in the company of angels. And let us continue to do the holy work of God that none other than God has called us to do. Let me close with a poem, an anonymous poem. When the last hungry person is fed and the last homeless one put to bed, when the crying of the children is stilled and the cupboards of poor homes are filled, when the gospel of Christ has been preached to the last, the lost, and the least, when sad, broken hearts have been mended and sin and crime are all ended, when Christ rules the hearts of all women and men, and this earth is like a little heaven, then may we sit idly by, waiting in peace for our home in the sky. But while sin, death, and want are still around us, and evil forces surround us, God give us the grace to attack it and keep everlastingly at it. So my friends, whatever it is that you are going through, be it good, bad, or in between, put your faith in Christ, your trust in God, and your hand in mine, so that together we may trudge the road of happy destiny. And may the Spirit of God always be your guide. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the nations are fraught with anxiety and fear and violence is all around us. Guide all peoples to the way of peace. Our homes and communities are torn by disputes and mistrust. Soothe our angry spirits and reconcile us to your will. We are killing your creation with our toxic ways. Restore your good earth and make us better stewards of all you have given us. Your children suffer from diseases and addictions. Help us, we pray, and make us whole. God of life, in spite of all your promises, we fear death and cannot help but grieve for those we have lost. Comfort us, restore our hope. And Holy God, you know our needs even before we ask. So hear the secret prayers of our hearts and keep us, O Lord, in the sure and certain hope of your providential care and guide us in your ways of justice, peace, and love until that day when we welcome Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.